Well they, my name is Mally M and welcome back to Lady and Mystery. This is the second part of this and by the time you're seeing us, I'll be in Philadelphia. So I'll have no idea if this is doing well or not, but I hope you're enjoying yourself. Cause I am, cause it's Asian and it's gay and it's me. <laughs> anyway, we're back right where we left off with this new noble daughter who is basically blackmailing me. Let's keep going. The sun's setting and only a wind chime I hung for the guest was shaking, making a tinkling sound. A faint small gong rhythm of the traveling actors came on the wind. The search party for Shim Juhi must be there as well, searching for her. Juhi was sleeping on the desk already. He breathed hard. He must have been tired from all these jumping over the wall and running away. I heard this story from the street once. Lesbianism! Lesbianism? What am I collecting? What? There was a woman who was growing old alone even though she's not a widow. Officers are usually putting their nose into other people's businesses, especially in the country area, so the officer of her town arranged a marriage for her. But then she cheated on her husband with a woman and got executed for practicing lesbianism. Oh. Oh. It's that bad here. Okay. Now I get an idea more of... Okay, cool. Please don't kill us at the end. I've had enough of games and movies killing us at the end, please. As society became more open-minded, more women have been caught for practicing lesbianism. Some people say it's incurable no matter what. Yeah, it kind of is. Also, practicing lesbianism is a weird way to say that, but okay. It's not a religion, it's your sexuality, it's part of you. All right. How dare a lady from the family of a minister can do that? How can she throw away that perfect marriage? <laughs> would you be ra would you rather be rich and miserable with a man or happy with a woman? As I groaned and plucking away my gat, Wu Sung began to talk with a low voice. My lady. What? We don't need to take a risk or go to the court. Why don't we just run away for a couple months, just you and me? Uh, what? Why? I don't think she's bluffing. We might get into really big trouble. Let's just hand her over to the police, abandon the store, and run away. You're in a lot of debt from everywhere anyway. We have nothing to lose at this point. Run away with you? Why would I do that? Do you think we can come back to Hanyang after wandering around for months again? Are you really ready to start over from scratch? Wu Sung couldn't answer. We should be attached to the store as well. We've been through a lot to start this business. We tried so hard to seem like Hung Yong Yong Bonds. It was so hard to come here to Hung Yong, but it was even harder to buy this small store. And stop calling me my lady. Don't ever call me my lady again as if we're still in the past. What are you talking about? I thought we were poor. Do I actually have a station here? I scolded him quietly since Juhi was sleeping, then I lowered my head discouragingly. It would have been easier to run away if we were in the past. There was a time when we were more used to wandering around than settling down. Oh, we were nomadic. Though my life is nothing more than living in a tavern, chatting with Makwa, eating watery soup, and making money by taking care of other people's business. How can I abandon this place? I can't abandon it like that. Let's just help that lady and just think about ourselves. Just ourselves. I untied my gap piece by piece and lay down on the desk. As soon as I laid my forehead on the desk, I felt like collapsing. Isn't Juhi sleeping on that desk too? What? Alright. You describe a few days with Shim Juhi. I need some words that I don't usually use. Chaos. Destruction. Hell. <laughs> Bottomless pit. Mire. I grew into a new habit of counting words that are rare but clear. Yesterday, it was about the meal. It was nothing. There have been more places for quick meals lately for merchants who have little time to eat. Just some rice and side dishes mixed together on a pumpkin leaf. They don't give you a bowl for that, so I got it on a wooden dipper bowl. She got so frustrated and yelled at me where I even got this beggar's food. How anyone can ever eat out of a wooden bowl. Oh, 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 is Princess too, too used to high and mighty that she can't eat out of a bowl? Even a servant wouldn't eat this weird mix of salted seafood, soybean pancake, and cooked millet, and this is just dog food. Cow food or horse food. I would have a regular meal with warm soup and proper rice at a tavern instead of this beggar's food if it wasn't for you hiding here. You just starve if you don't like it. Forget it. Give me that. Don't eat. I'll just eat it all by myself. I'm not even paying enough, and now you're annoying me so much. Gee, 
if you're just gonna yell at me like that, then just move out of this place. Move out. Oh my god, you're such a brat. All right, you're now less attractive to me. Due to his particular craziness as a northern village lady, countless nights that I had to wake up in the middle of the night wondering if that might be the police, or other search party every time I hear some noise from outside, restless body sleeping in the storm multiple days in a row, and a constant awareness that I should be careful not to get caught that I'm not Yangban. As a result of all these, now I look like a corpse who just got up from the coffin. For a second, I got zoned out and I couldn't think of anything at all. My body was such a mess now, sleeping on the desk day after day. I came to myself as I noticed Juhi right next to me. Oh, yes, Shim Juhi. I've been staying in the store since I took her in. Juhi was sitting next to me with a booker in her hands. She seemed like she got up way earlier than I did. Her posture was like that of a nice woman of virtue from a picture book. As soon as I thought that thought in my head, she rested her chin on her hand in a sleazy way and put her face right in front of me. Interesting. You're a guy and yet you have long eyelashes. Your skin is so pale. Even when I was half asleep, I immediately felt uncomfortable and pulled myself back from her. What are you talking about from this early morning? You said you only like women. And? Can't a girl just say a word? Just saying you're pretty not like your brother. I'm really not interested in guys. Juhi made it very clear and looked at Wusung with side eyes. Wusung is now sleeping on the floor like a servant. Never lived together with a noble of high status like her, so I was worried so much. I might find out who we really are if she stays with us longer. But surprisingly, Juhi didn't ca seem to care about Wusung at all. She's now back to her book in her hands. It was the nine chapters on the mathematical art. Nerd. Nerd! One of many math books on my shelf. I'm a bigger nerd! Ugh, shame. Mr. Hisu, do you like math? What am I collecting? Oh, what? I, like, looked in the menu and it still doesn't... Okay. And you don't like Confucian? She asked me without keeping her eyes off the book. I just said yes indifferently and nodded. I'm only interested in math because my father was an accountant. I'm from a commoner family and my family was a family of mathematicians since my great-grandfather. I'm getting help from a leader of Songbang who goes to foreign countries. I have some other random book in this place other than math book. Juhi looked around the store and smiled self-consciously. My brother hates those. He said there have been too many people who are interested in trivia than Confucian classics, and that those people are saying all the nonsense. Oh yeah, all of the nonsense. It sounded like she was judging, but she didn't seem like it. It seemed more like she was so over her brother. Her brother was a very successful figure who became a sixth-rank government official at a young age. Did I do my research on this girl? Alright. I put my gat on my head and tried to read her face. Are you not close to your family? Yes, well, my dad adored me a lot when he was alive since I was a late child. You can tell it by how spoiled I am. He even took me to the marketplace on the day of my brother's government examination. On the day of his government examination? Whatever that means? Yes, but my dad wanted to buy a pair of nice shoes for his only daughter. It made my brothers and sisters-in-law hate me so much. And when he passed away, the table is turned. Do you know what I mean? No. But if you just get married to him, your family's life is going to get much easier, and they're not going to hate you anymore. You messed up with your own luck. That's why I don't want to get married even more. My family was always at my throat. Now they're so willing to send me away to get the benefit of my marriage? I will never do that for them. I don't even want to marry a guy anyway. I mean, I know the role of a noble lady is just cool, but... I feel ya. Family can be... As Juhi mentioned about her being a tool, I rubbed my chin awkwardly. Some obvious quotes came across my mind, like that's the life of a northern village lady, or like, it's better to marry a guy from a high status than marrying a guy and having to support him the whole life for his government examination. But it seemed a bit ridiculous to say that to Juhi now. I mean, I can't even handle you. What did the only son of interior minister do so wrong to have a rowdy wife like you? Not married to them. You're even into women. I ended up neither agreeing or disagreeing. I ended up neither agreeing or dissuading, but just scolding her. Tell me about it. In the long term, I'm doing him a favor for giving him a chance to live a better life. So he should rather thank me. Doohy was so smooth in answering without showing her displeasure, even though I was talking bad about her. And her eyes were fixed on the book the whole time. However much I do hate her, I have to admit that I respect her audacity. I guess.
Ooh, rain. It's been raining outside for days now. The worse the weather gets, the slower the search party will move. Oh, that's pretty. Come back. I collected a police. That afternoon, we got the first guest since we came to this. It was police officer. Oshion. Police, please open the door. You're a lot politer than American police. Knew Shimjuhi wasn't careful enough to have a lot of witnesses on the way here. So much for handling it safely. It wasn't handled safe, was it? What am I going to do now? I sat down on the ground and I heard familiar voices. Before. Sir, it's Park Wangsam. It's me and... S uh, I'm not good at Korean names. Seyon? I, I know them. I didn't come here to get Zhuhi. There are policemen who occasionally pay a visit to this Zhong Huso for help. I dragged Zhuhi out and pushed her behind the folding screen. Put a borio and put a folding screen there to make a secret chamber three years ago, but it's so dusty and cobweb now. I know them. Just hide now. Ugh, there's so much dust here. You do not have room to talk. Here, your book. As soon as I put Zhuhi in her book behind the holding screen, Husung opened the door. Yay! You guys! There you were. Hi. It was a police inspector of Uposhiong Park Wangsam who came through the door with a loud voice. Next to him was... I'm not gonna get these names right. Damo Je Seyon, as always. Oh! Hello, cutie. Hello, cutie. I didn't know you were a girl. How have you been? There are a police inspector and his Damo who were subordinates of the police superintendent Zhang from Uposhiong. Does Damo mean wife? Hold on, hold on. Before I start shamelessly hitting on her. So, hold on, this, this is important research. Okay, so not his wife, but according to this, which I'll throw up on screen, <laughs> a Damo is a class of servants that's lower than slaves, but it literally means tea lady. Okay, so she's a servant. All right. Good to know she's not married and single. <laughs> and she has a sword. Oh, you just got ten times more hotter to me. Okay, anyway. Thirst aside. Superintendent Zhang with gray hair is highest authority in Uboshiong, serving the longest among other three senior superintendents. But since he is in bad health lately, he's making Park Wangsam do most of his work. This Park Wangsam is coming to this place every so often. Without paying me. <sighs> I was looking for you. I went to the tavern, but they said you hadn't been there for days. Aqua was whining, so I was just comforting her. Well, I was cleaning and doing some stuff here. What's the occasion? Seriously, Zhuhi. Fuck up. You're so loud. While I was pretending I don't know anything, I kept hearing a light noise from behind the folding screen. Come to think of it, there were spider webs and spiders and some dead rats there. Whoops! I don't remember if I removed the dead rat. I should have cleaned it up already. While I was distracted, Wang Sum started whining with a long sigh. Maybe you've already heard about it, but a girl is missing. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so it's been crazy here in Boshiong. I stayed up for two whole nights. What a chaos. Is it about the minister's daughter running away? Yes, yes. Mr. Interior Minister even came to the Boshiong last night. He was freaking out and yelling, and we didn't know what it was about. So we just ran to him. Even Commissioner General ran to him, and turns out his soon-to-be daughter-in-law did a moonlight flit with a guy. Did a moonlight flit? Guy? There's no guy. She did, did she? Don't know what you're talking about. That tiny gentle old man was shaking his mustache with anger and grabbing Commissioner General's sleeves. I thought we were all going to be screwed. Superintendent Zhang was asleep, but then he woke up. Then a few minutes later, Mr. Shim, the brother of that missing girl, came. He was yelling too, and... In short, Mr. Shim's sister, Shim Zhuhi, jumped over the wall and ran away from home at night. I've heard all this before, but I will pretend I haven't, and I'll see her really cute. Then I get to know you better. Is she a love interest? Oh my god, I'm going to be so upset she's not even a love interest. Because I'm interested. Marry me. 
Mr. Shim claimed she ran away alone, but the interior minister... Seon summed up Wang Sum's lengthy rambling. And also, if any of you know how to pronounce these names, please... I don't know how reliable the internet is. Wang Sum nodded and continued. Well, interior minister's status is incredibly high, but Mr. Shim's also the first son of a highborn family that turned out a lot of minister. Those two were highborn noblemen. Nagging me all day. Drove me crazy. Hmm. But the status of a living person affects us more than the status of the dead. So we took the interior minister's words more seriously. That it doesn't make sense that she ran away alone or that she got kidnapped. He was saying, how can a noble lady just disappear without a guy helping her? And it must have been a nighttime getaway. And it actually makes sense to me as well. What? A nighttime getaway? Yes, he's so sure that Mr. Shim's sister ran away with a guy and told everyone, even the ones in the suburban area, to arrest any suspicious-looking couple. Oh. So I haven't been sleeping at all since then. Before Wang Sum finished his speech, I heard Juhi rustling again. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Up back there. I don't care if you are being bitten by a million spiders. We can c treat those bites. Shut up back there. Oh my god. I guess even she got perplexed being accused of cheating on her groom to be with a guy. Oh, yeah, that's the problem. So, have you arrested some suspicious couples so far? Well, the thing is, we haven't yet. That's actually why I came here today. I don't know what kind of crazy dude dared to run away with a noble lady like that. You are really good at this kind of stuff. <laughs> Shut up. Wang Sum seemed really desperate. But I can hand Juhi over to him. It was not too late for me to tell on her to him. This is a choice for me. But every time I debated, her audacious face haunted me. But, but I don't want to do her route anymore. I'm interested in this lady. I'll tell them I jumped over the wall with a scholar named Kim Hees because we are in love. Oh. That's right, she's still blackmailing me. Never mind. Ugh. You didn't even know me. How could we even be in love? Sure. Why don't you look at it from a different angle? What if she jumped over the wall but not with a guy? Then she could have already been far south by now. Then she must have been out of Hung Yang already. Please leave. But leave your lady friend here. This is wrong with me. I tried to change the course of the investigation, but I felt a little uncomfortable at the same time not even grateful. Why do I have to make an excuse for her now? What? They already told me to arrest the guy as well. Said Mr. Shim claimed she either ran away or got kidnapped. I think he's right. You haven't found any witnesses that saw her running away with a guy, have you? How do you know that? He's right here with me? He already told me anything, but I can't tell him how I know. Then Se-young gave a sigh and interrupted. But there's no evidence that she didn't run away with a guy either. And there's no witness saying she's other than her family. You know how it works. Mr. Interior Minister is so eager to arrest a guy who ran away with her. Who's going to dare stand up against him? Yes, Seiyan's right. Plus, Mr. Shim submitted a letter of resignation to the king as soon as he went out to Poshio. He's given up his sixth rank government position. You know how hard to get that position. Really. Why would he do that unless he's hiding something? That just makes it more suspicious. The game takes place in... I'm gonna butcher this... Seoul? Seoul, Korea. However you properly say that. So I guess that gives me some context. Anyway. Jim Juhi's brother submitted a letter of resignation? Is he trying way to... Is he trying to get away from his punishment before anyone else can charge him? He must be appointed to be a governor of some local prefecture. I guess the whole family's planning to run away then. A girl almost extinguished the whole family, so even though it must be devastating, it's better to run away than stay in Hung Yang and take responsibility. That's what we call a coward. And honestly, if you think about it, the guy really doesn't have anything to lose. He might be embarrassed for a little while, but really, it's the woman that has to give up her whole life for him, given this time period, anyway, and where we are. And Mr. Interior Minister is still furious, even after what Mr. Shim did? Of course. Blind sick in bed. I mean, a girl who was supposed to be his daughter-in-law cheated on his son with another guy. <laughs> it's not a guy. He would really want to destroy Mr. Shim's family now. They will never find any trace of Juhi since she came right here to Zhang Wuso as soon as she left the house. Though there won't be any evidence that Mr. Interior Minister can use against Mr. Shim directly. 
I can change the whole situation with a word from my mouth, but I didn't tell them anything about Juhi. The policeman left the store with gloomy faces and no gains. You could have gained me. As a lover, say young. Look, I've only met two of the women so far, but I think I already know who I want, okay? We'll see. We'll see who else I meet. Hopefully the game gives me the chance to meet everyone before I make my decision. But right now, heavily leaning toward Miss, uh, Miss Sword Girl over there. Policeman left the store with gloomy faces and no gains. Wong Song told me he would stop by again when he finds something. Oh, when you find something. Well, not, because I have what you seek in my whatever that is. Partition? Huh. Situation really is bad. Juhi rested her chin on her hand and gave a sigh. Wu Sung and I happen to be accomplices. So now we're all trying to come up with a together. Especially I'm trying the most since I'm the smartest one here. Oh no. You know you're doomed when I'm the smartest one in the room. Oh god. Okay, let's get this straight. If I were your brother, there would be three things that I would have to think about. One, how I would soothe Mr. Interior Minister's anger. Two, how I would avoid being embarrassed. Three, what I should do about my sister. Why am I going through all this trouble for a runaway lady who I haven't even known before? The more I think about it, the more I get frustrated. I kept feeling like this was my last chance to get away from Shim Juhi when the policeman went. I kept twisting a fan in my hair. All three seems hard to deal with. Not that it's my problem. Why isn't it your problem? Aren't you gonna go back? You said they don't like you already. Aren't you scared? If I was your brother, I would grab your hair first as soon as I see you. You're in big trouble now. I don't think a nobleman would do such a disgraceful thing. Well, I'm not a nobleman. If he wants to punish me, he would choose a slyer way to do. Oh. Juhi raised one side of her mouth like she's scoffing, but she kept biting her dry lips inside like she's anxious. It was a front. But I should prove my innocence eventually. About the part that I ran away with a guy. Paused and looked at me from upside to down. Well, technically I was with a guy, though. You are still wrong. Ugh. I'm joking. I won't make you a guy who I cheated with. So don't worry, you'd still be incorrect. I thank you very much. I felt like I'm getting crazy as well, so I lied down on the desk, and then Wu Sung slapped the desk. Bro, I'm lying down. Easy. I think it's best that you keep claiming that you've been kidnapped. You just cry and claim that you've been maintaining your integrity. Then it looks like she's been molested. And if that kind of thing happens to a noble lady, we just kill ourselves. So I wouldn't use that excuse if I want to live. Ugh. This place is really not a good place to live. Brother, you said that area is the most valuable area in this entire nation. That's why she's crazy. If you are a noble lady and have done such thing, it means you're just insane. For a while, Shuhi kept silent and just kept tapping the cover of the book. It doesn't seem like she's regretting or reflecting on herself. Why would she? She was staring at somewhere, sitting upright, then suddenly she stopped tapping. We're struggling because we're trying to find a solution. We don't have a better solution. Maybe we should just go by the book. Go by the book? We don't need any strategy. I'll just go back confidently and tell them I'm innocent. If they want me to die, then I die. Even if I get executed, I would be keeping my integrity as a noble lady who loves women. Ah, it's a personal pride. I love being gay in a country that'll kill me for it. Juhi concluded in a perfectly calm voice. I also understand where she's coming from. I was at a loss at her aggressive con I would not want to marry a guy either. Is that her solution? Just dying like that? What is that? I can't kick you out if you say things like that. Huh. Do I have to consider that for you to kick me out without feeling guilty? Gosh, you're so mean. I should have let Wong Sum take her earlier. I got upset and stood on my feet, but then I couldn't think of anything. Why would I be upset? I'm not going to kick her out to die anyway. I would have her stay with her for a few more days whether I like it or not. And I can see how Mr. Shim would react in the meantime. Maybe I should think of a new solution based on If I can't think of a solution even by then, will Juhi really be going to confess? Then die? It's only been a few days, but I guess I kind of grew on her already. Or she grew on me, actually. How oh, weird. Okay.
The solution to this situation came in an unexpected direction. Wah! Ears. I was greeting the policeman again one night when there was a clamor outside and people were looking for Park Wang Sum and Zhe Se Yun. Some young officers whose clothes hadn't been washed for days just came in and shouted at Wang Sum. Oh my gosh, boss! Mr. Shim's sister is found dead! Huh? What? Where? Not even that far from here. She was found at the entrance of the mountain near Mr. Shim's house. Committed suicide. Hurry, this way. You've searched that area like thousands of times. How can a body be found in that area? Damn it. Wong Sung hurriedly got up and tied his shoelace. No, stay, stay, sword lady, stay, I love you. Then he bowed at us with Se Yong and rushed out of the door. I'll come back. As soon as they left, there was a big noise from behind the folding screen and Zhu He got up. Did I clean that place forever? What do you mean I died? Wu Sung and I were surprised as she was. Bang. Felt like I just got hit by a hammer, and then a knot tangled inside my head just got cut. Just erasing her from the world. Being judging her. Oh, her dad faked her death. Yikes. While we are still in shock, Wu Sung and Juhi were about to follow me outside the store. Are you guys both crazy? Where do you think you're going? I pushed them back inside and locked the door again. Ooh. Thank you, Logo. I don't know why you keep popping up, but thanks. Alright, cool. A few days later, there was a funeral at Shim Zhuhi's house. According to Wang Sam, as soon as the policeman confirmed the place she died, the whole family hurriedly took the body with them, so that nobody could identify it. Well, that's convenient, but I don't know if I want to pursue Zhuhi anymore. They say even though it is a funeral for a high-born lady, they've decided to do the five-day funeral because their family is not a family of extravagance. Or they're covering it up! Must have a pretty shit family, though, for them to immediately be like, You're dead! People gossip that the reason they do five-day funerals is that the sister has died of an accident, but Mr. Shim didn't care and pushed through the short funeral. Technically correct. Mr. Shim is said to become governor of the prefecture that he has no connection at all. The whole family is going to move there right after Zhuhi's funeral. And that dead Shim Zhuhi is still alive and safe and sound in here, Zhang Huso. He must have bought a girl who was dying of disease or something and faked the identity. They're just going to tell the people that it's Shim Zhuhi, they cry and have a funeral. He can just tell his sister is dead, he can just run away to the other prefecture with no string attached. Because there's no way Zhuhi can mess this up anyway. And she'll find a way. As I reached a conclusion, Zhuhi wiped her face, slid down, and lay flat on the desk. Zhuhi is already torn up several times, so today, on her funeral day, she was completely exhausted already and looked half dead. <laughs> oh, gee. Zhuhi waved her hand and chuckled like she was joking. I'm really dead now. Should I go to attend my own funeral? Wu Sung is conservative by nature, so he was more upset than Zhuhi and couldn't keep it to himself. Brother, why don't we just go now and tell them the truth? It's her fault to cancel the wedding. What kind of family fakes a funeral of a person who is still alive? This is so vicious and sly. That's all the more reason that we do not bring her back to that family. Because that is a bad environment. No way. She goes there now and says she's not dead. Her brother faked her death and that she actually jumped off the wall and stuff. It doesn't change anything. If she ever does such a thing, the only difference she can make is to let people know that she's still alive. Everything else will be much worse after. It's not really that terrible if you think about it. Their family cleared themselves of a false accusation. Mr. Shim kept claiming that his sister had been kidnapped or something bad had happened to her. So whether it's fake or not, his sister's suicide helped him save face. People were already thinking she ran away with a guy and Interior Minister was so ready to rip them off. Now the situation has changed. So it was a clever move. Jim Zhuhi is not going to die for sure. Just can't go back to her house ever again. I knew that all young bun cares about respecting their honor, but I didn't know they could do such a thing. No wonder they're all in the high positions of government. They really are smart. Uh, by the way, your due date has already passed a long time ago. What are you going to do now? Now you really can't go back to your... I don't know. I should just make space here and stay. What? In our store? I'm sorry, but this is not your store anymore from today. Will you move out now? You haven't paid rent for so long anyway. Bitch! 
Yuhi said she was going to let us use this place for free, that she was going to pay us even more money when she goes back, and now she completely changed her words. What are you talking about? You said you'd let us use this place for free if we let you stay for six days. That's before things went bad like this. Oh, oh, okay, thanks. Wow. I have my own fish to fry. I can't let you use it for free. Oh. Mm. I think I'm just going to live here. Yeah, I'm, mm, I'm not pursuing you. Hello, sword lady, come back. Come back. I'll give you five days to move out. Fuck you. What? You should move out before they finish my funeral and make my grave. You might want to keep your mouth shut if you want to stay alive. Thank you for everything. Oh, I got dumbstruck as Yuhi searched under her skirts and sleeves and took out all the jewelry. It seemed quite serious thinking of surviving alone. Only Wusung and I were confused right now. Also, all Juhi's belongings were so dazzling that made us feel shabbier. Her trinkets alone seemed more than 20 young. Is she really gonna kick out the people who helped her for more than six days? We've been hiding you and helping you for days. Is this how you repay us? Well, some people call it bullying. Well, then call me a bully. Why are you saying you want more money? I'll try to make some more money for you, but it'll take some time. I think you deserve it. Juhi interrupted and pulled out one of her trinkets. But I couldn't ask her to give her jewelry to us. That means that we really have to move out. We've been in this place for years and we can't just lose everything like that. You should reconsider. You can't live in this place. You should sell your stuff and get some money and get yourself a proper room. You're gonna get sick if you live in a place like this. Didn't you see the mold there? I tried to persuade her with my fake smile, but she didn't even respond. Like she thinks it's not even worth considering. Of course, it's impossible for a noble lady to get a room and live alone in this country. It's actually wiser for her to just stay here than try to get a room for herself. But why should we lose the store that we've been cherishing for years just because an immature noble lady ran away from home to cancel her wedding? I got discouraged and dropped my shoulder. Made those weird flyers. Made Makwa advertise us for cheap pay. I shouldn't have distributed our flyers to all the marketplaces in Shosun. And the flyer wouldn't have gone all the way to the northern village, and Shim Juhi would never run away from home in the first place. But no matter how much I regret it, it didn't make any difference. Do you really want to kick it out? Do you think I'm faking it then? How do you think a woman would get a proper room alone in Shosun? How would she keep her belongings safe? Staying here is the only way. Juhi sounded adamant, and as soon as I heard her saying that, a clever idea came across my mind. Well, if that's the case, you're looking up a fixer right now. If you have a problem, let me handle it for you. Why don't you ask me for help? What? Place to stay? No problem. I folded the fan and pointed at Juhi with Oh, well, is this gonna work? Wait, what's happening? Oh, are we out? What? Did she just kick us out? Sir! Oh my gosh, it's been such a long time! Makwa, what are you doing here? I'm waiting for you like forever! As soon as we entered the tavern, Makwa ran out to greet us like she wasn't sleeping at all, even though it was really late at night. It's not the first time we haven't been here in a long time, but she always greeted us dramatically like this every time. Whenever we stay away for a long time, Juma always rents out our room for transient guests. Then she feels guilty after that and does our laundry for us, or puts some more meat in our soup. With all our, laundry, with all our laundry hanging on the wire, I knew that she must have rented our room to several guests in the meantime. I'm scared to see how our room has turned into hell. Really hoped our previous guests use our room clean. Got the rent and your gift as well. Here. Rent and your gift. Did you get the money? Wow! And this pouch for me? Thank you, sir! Aqua expressed how happy she is with exaggeration and hugged that red and yellow pouch. Then Juhi cleared her throat after waiting outside the door for quite long. It was her sassy way to pressure me to lead her to my room instead of daring to leave her standing in the dark, cold, shabby place alone. Or how nice I'm feeling with you. Then Makwa noticed her and her eyes got wider. Who's this girl yet you brought with you? Not my girlfriend, I promise you that. Makwa stared at Juhi and me with her face frowning. Even though wearing cheap clothes not- That is not cheap, but okay. Juhi stood out as her posture was not like other girls in that area at all. She should have acted like a plebeian girl now that she dressed like a plebeian. That is the same dress! 
But I guess it's not easy for her. Makwa seems suspicious looking at the woman she's never seen before. Usung knows that hid Juhi's luggage behind his back, but he made a fuss. Everything looks suspicious with those two, so I distracted Makwa. Oh, this is my half-sister. Uh, if we end up together, this is gonna be really awkward. She suddenly contacted me, so I came to take her. What? Half-sister? Did you have a half-sister? My family has a lot of secrets. So is her mom a Nobi? I collected a Nobi. What does that mean? Oh! Oh! I'm an idiot! I'm so stupid! Oh, you can collect words and they tell you what they mean! That's really neat and handy, and I should have clicked on these things sooner. Let's see what the definition for lesbianism is. Lesbianism was socially banned in Shosun, but some court ladies who cannot get married were in homosexual relationships with each other. Okay, so there's a word book. Now we know. Oh my god. Okay, we're back. Or a plebeian. As Makwa whispered, Juhi got frustrated and answered rather quickly. My mom is a plebeian. Either a bastard of Nobi or a plebeian, it would be equally humiliating for her, but I guess it matters to her that her fake identity has a slightly higher status. Neither Wusung or I don't really take time deciding some. Jim Juhi wants to be the daughter of a plebeian, so I went for it. Yes, her mom is a plebeian. Anyway, she hasn't eaten anything all day. Can we have some meal? Sure, but it's a bit late, so we only have leftovers food. Is that okay? I'm too hungry to be picky, just anything. You better not be picky. As Mako disappeared to the kitchen, Juhi raised her head like a ghost with a soulless face. She must have been shocked from the moment he put her, she put her foot on this dirty, hot, and enclosed tavern's yard. She was frightened and shaking with disgust just by a little dirt splattered on her shoes. Oh honey, we're not going to survive. I was staring at her with my hands folded on my back, and then told her in a sassy way. Alright, I'm going to assume it's this maneuver. Here we go. Who would help you like this for such a little amount of money, maybe? That's sassy enough for you. I admit it seems dirty and shabby, but she won't ever get this kind of room on your own as a woman in the country. Ha 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 ha. I'm doing you a big favor. I'm done being sassy now. I'm letting you keep your store for free. That's not a little amount of money. Juhi answered icily. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Screw you. The only cash I got was only five poon. While I was complaining, Wu Sung opened the half-broken door of the room. The room was utterly wretched for a noble lady to even put a foot on it. Since there were a few guests using our room while we were gone, the room was a mess with all the garbage and some dirty clothes. I don't usually mind it, but the room seemed more depressing than usual now that I'm showing it to Juhi. She even freaked out by a rice ball, so now her face turned pale with fear just by looking at this room. She grabbed my sleeve as if she was grabbing my throat. What? What are you doing to me? Are you saying the three of us are going to stay here together? Didn't you say yourself that a Confucian scholar should be able to stay in the same place with a woman? It's weird. This is absurd. I'll just take care of my life now. Give me back my joy. I never really liked it anyway from the moment you asked me to pretend to be my your half-sister. Juhi raised her chin and held out her hand. I took away her hand and pushed her into the room. Ah, take that. Let's just live with here. Take good care of your jewelry. You can trust us. Ish. So you asked us for help like a second ago, and now you have a room already. How amazing is that? How are you going to get a room alone as a woman? Be positive, alright? I'll do whatever to make you feel comfortable here. Let me go. How is forcing me to move in with you is taking care of me? Please throw away your prejudice. If you have that kind of a attitude in your mind, nothing will be enough for you. My brother and I will sleep on the colder side of the room. You can have all the warmer side of yourself. It's okay. We're both scholars. You said you were merchants, not scholars. I was desperate then. He is such a... Who's a gentleman? Can't you just see it on his face? He's so mild, kind, generous, and nice, and he's a natural-born scholar. Who am I talking about, my brother? I have nothing to worry about. You sound like a fraud now, you know that? Yeah, I know. But I don't, apparently. I smiled at her as wide as I can. Even as she sang from Song Du, Mei Wall couldn't smile brighter than that. 
this what you wanted? And that's all you're getting. Doohy stared angrily at me and Musung for a while, then gave a sigh and went ahead into the her room. A little, little bit of a typo there. I should stay with us and tell people that you're my sister. We're guys, so we'll help you use your money however you want. We're just doing you a favor. Being the daughter of a minister, Shim Juhi must have known that this is all nonsense. But there is one thing she can guess. Whatever she imagined, Wu Sung's and my problem is much more pressing than that. She would have guessed that we might embezzle her money for like a month. But I'm actually going to sell all her jewelry tomorrow to pay my debt. If she ever asks us to give her jewelry back later, I can just say we spent it all on her clothes and food. Now we're family, for at least as long as we live together. Wu Sung, turn on the light and let's give ourselves applause. Louder. Cool. Welcome. Let's welcome our new family member with applause. Oh, you condescending bitch. There. Is this what you wanted? Is this what you wanted? Is the mic even picking this up? Probably not. While we were making a fuss, Juhi was sweeping the floor with her hand and frowning at some hair and dust on her palm. When we stopped clapping and looked out the window, the rain clouds were gone and the yard was showered in moonlight. How oh, pretty. Wow, even the weather is so nice. I think the sky is celebrating your visit. It's just the gray sky. Oh, and there's our meal. Aqua, bring it here. Uh, why? What? Pretty picture, but why? Am I just pouting over there in the corner? Why? All right, cool. Great, thanks. The logo, I guess. Reviewing for the episode one has been unlocked. Did I finish episode one already? Did I? W w s what is that? Oh. Hello. Okay. You know what? I actually think that that is a great place to stop because it looks like I have finished episode one, I think. So, anyway, that's it for that one. Thank you so much, whoever happens to be watching this. I'm having a good time with this game. It's very casual, very laid back. I don't want to punch Juhi a little bit, though, but... My desire to see Sword Lady again is too great, so I will keep playing. Like, comment, subscribe, it really does help me out. Until next time, bye!